Okay. Webinar is being recorded. Okay. Um, uh, you know, welcome everybody. We have the uh, uh, April meeting here today. We have four members present, and one is absent, and that's Sanjay. Uh, uh, I will share uh, anything we cover here today with Sanjay. We'll, certainly, he has access to minutes. Matt, you're going to do the minutes again? Okay. Uh, Sanjay, will, Sanjay will have access to the minutes. Uh, and I'll sort of get a chance to talk to him about anything we cover here. I will be keeping an eye on the on the public attendees to see if anybody comes in. We did post the 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 schedule, and there may even be things that people know are coming up that they would check in and try and ask us about or or talk about because there have been some little things that have been off our beaten path here. Uh, as I said, one person is not here. I can first of all make the announcement that. Uh, Victor has officially uh, stepped down. Victor has officially resigned from the position. He told me with regrets that he just can't handle the the uh, uh, the scheduling, and so he asked to he asked for the process of resignation, which leaves us with two open seats. I did get from uh, town hall. Angela sent me the list. I, we have four people who have applied. I'm going to reach out to them tomorrow and just check and see what their continuing interest is in applying for the position, Sarah. And remember that I'll be stepping down. So we're you'll losing have... Sarah and three, Yusuf. Three to fill. And Yusuf. Oh Sarah my God. and Yusuf okay. uh, are gonna be coming up here also. Wow. So um, hopefully we like all four of them, but we will post again if we if we need to. Uh, right now we're, we're full for two and with the anticipation we could actually extend that if we wanted to if we wanted to uh sort of keep somebody in the loop for when those open spaces came when when was victor due to renew good question maybe maybe one option would be to have somebody fill in his term and you know what i mean like and then yep if you have somebody that's kind of on the fence maybe they can do whatever years he has left maybe one or two. Oh, if there's somebody that wanted to just Right. Take a little bit of time, uh, you know, feel it out or somebody who wanted to commit for a short period of time. Um, if you really want them and we only have two spots left, you know what I mean? Like if there's, if there's more people applying and we like them, maybe that's one we, way to decide. We, we also have, we have the one spot that's been open since I took it, since I took the position. And it's we not have, just whether we like them, it's whether they want it. They like, right. Okay. Um, Victor's spot, I don't know. I guess that's a mechanical thing also, if anybody here knows what the what the <laughs> protocol is there. But uh, uh, if we hired somebody to fill Victor's space, would that be, would we would we be filling them as a last couple of, that's Yusuf's question, how long until he's up? If we have somebody filling Yusuf's term, do they, do they complete Yusuf's term or do they pick up their own full term? Right. Uh, do you mean Victor's? Yes, yeah. for Victor's. If Victor is cool. resigning now, do does the does the person we hire in Victor's chair end up end up uh, having a full term? We, are we hiring them to a full term? Or are we they hiring them to fill? That's what but I'm I'm looking at the I'm looking at the website and Yusuf is does it, he has another year, so okay, you stuck with me. <laughs> oh, Yusuf has another year. Sorry, I, yeah, I thought I thought it was only Victor and I who were going on. Okay, so, so Yusuf, uh, good to have you around. <laughs> <You're> not, <laughs> you're I, I think allowed, I'll stay one more year. You're not allowed to run yeah. away from me. <laughs> um, okay, uh, and so uh, I guess the first item we can cover is approval of Mar of the March minutes. I had only one little punctuation thing, and I don't recall if I even bothered sending it to Matt. I think under Winterfest, maybe at the end of the third bullet, I don't, I can't read my own writing, so I don't know if I was adding a period or taking away something, but that I didn't was all. get that. I didn't get that piece, but um, okay. Oh, yeah. It's probably just the way I punctuate. 
It should have been a comma instead of a period. Okay. Do we have a motion? I move to accept the minutes of the March meeting, March 7th meeting. A second. Second. In favor. All in favor? All right. The March minutes have been officially confirmed, approved. Okay. Um, I guess I can move in really quickly into program reports. Uh, we opened Cherry Hill eight days ago, nine days ago. Uh, and so the season is upon us. Um, the weather right now is, of course, we're in that, in that cold in the morning and nice in the afternoon sort of time. Uh, but we have had, uh, every time I've gone out there, there have been people on the course, even during the, the colder and wetter times that I've, I've been out there. There have been people on the course. I guess the flow has been pretty good over there right now. Uh, uh, Yusuf's been out. Has anybody else here been out to play? Um, uh, you know, we have, we're, we're trying to, uh, you know, see how this, how this uh, new season goes for us. There have been a little, a couple of little bumps for us, but I think it's been relatively smooth. Um, questions on Cherry Hill? The golf course. I'm now, I now run a golf course. I'm happy. Uh, aquatics is, lessons have begun. Um, uh, uh, lessons have begun for the pools. We are actually, this is a interesting one because we're, at, I think we might actually have more time and space available for us because I think there's uh, something going on with the Triton rentals right now. And so there may be more space for us and I have to reach back out somebody, there's somebody who wanted to do some, uh, some uh, extended program, a, a swimming program with us that I, said that I would follow up on and see uh, what we could do here. Uh, we might have more space to provide more as we start to do that. The, the, the uh, outdoor pools were setting as a target date, I believe. Uh, I believe it's uh, June 18th, I think is our target date for the outdoor pools. Um, and so we're, we're gearing ourselves up to do that. We're trying to, I know that Katie Brown has been busy trying to get her staff together and getting them certified. So aquatics is, is sort of, it, they started the lessons. They are now into the process of getting their, their spring, summer seasons going. Sarah. Is there an opportunity for free swim, for um, open swim at some open point? Swim. Or, yeah. Is uh, yeah, uh, the open swim, I believe, is on the weekends right now. Oh, okay, so uh, it's happening. That's good. Yeah, yes. Yeah, great. Okay. And I think part of the deal is if we if there is more space available, we have to find out, do we want to do more programmed uh, lessons, more program scheduling, or do we want to schedule some more time for open swim? And I think that's the conversation. I remember this was one that Carolyn had brought up before. Uh, the question is, what? serves our public the best with those if we have more space and we aren't working as much in a tight window around triton's rentals then we want to make sure that we are we are uh providing if if we need open swims if we need open swim sessions because we don't have a sufficient number of sufficient time we don't have access for people if we have people getting cut off the list they, they aren't able to get in then i think that would be feedback that Katie would need to hear uh, from the public, from the commission, and we could we could uh, I'll plan that accordingly. She has a pretty good I think she has a pretty good feel for uh, you know where the needs are over there. Um, she's about aquatics. Uh, and then spring sports and feeders and the revolving uh, in the revolving programs, uh, uh, spring sports and feeders. We have uh, Sanjay's out doing baseball. We in recreation have adopted the baseball program, um, uh, have adopted a middle school baseball program, a suburban program, which Sanjay and, and Amherst Youth Baseball are running right now. It's sort of a trial period because we do have a bubble between 
little league and the high school that we're trying to see if if recreation can fill that right now if there's a need here if it hurts the high school then it's not something that we'll do long term but we did want to get a chance they have a nice number of kids that get a chance to get out there and play for the amherst baseball right now and keep themselves in the in the mix uh, we picked up lacrosse this year, which was important for us to, to uh, 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 the middle school essentially didn't have space for it in the way that they've done it before. Uh, the girls, uh, seventh, eighth graders got, got waved up to the high school. So we're not running a girls middle school team. They're being used as JV players in the high school, but uh, boys, seventh, eighth, and then the middle school age the uh, uh, i mean fifth and sixth graders are are all right now playing i was just out watching for the first time i got a chance to watch the boys fifth and sixth grade play uh for a little bit out in the field here so we've we've arranged space for them we've ra- arranged uh, uh you know we worked with amherst lacrosse to get coaches and get them out there uh I, I couldn't go in there and sub today. We have UMass uh, has volunteered to coach our fifth and sixth grade girls. Uh, the UMass program head coach has offered up a couple of her players. And there's a little bit of an issue where they're, they, they aren't able to do the whole schedule and they're gonna have to, we're gonna have to be flexible with them through, uh, through the month of May. Uh, it's two or three practices a week. And, but they were really gracious to step in when we were looking for coaches. I didn't want to end up having to coach, step in and coach. I didn't think it was going to be fair because I would have had conflicts also. Um, but but they stepped in. The, the girls, I coached the first practice before we got UMass aboard. And they liked me. They really liked UMass. <laughs> they, really, they, really, they really liked having UMass come in and coach them. They're athletes. I love it because they're women. And... Uh, you know, I think they, they do a really nice job with them. And so the girls are, uh, you know, I, I think, I think that they're ready. They got a chance to go and see them play at UMass last week. I think they're going to go and watch them play on Saturday. Also, Matt. So how many teams have you adopted? We have, uh, uh, we have one, two, we have three teams, three age levels. I think the boys seventh, eighth grade has two teams, has an A and a B team. Um, we have boys, seventh, eighth, boys, fifth and sixth, girls, fifth and sixth. Uh, and then we also have mini mites. The, uh, we have like an instructional, an instructional league so for is, young kids. Were these teams that used to just be run by um, Amherst, Amherst Lacrosse? Amherst Lacrosse used to run them. At the middle school So you level, adopted all of it? We took the Amherst Lacrosse is now operating in cooperation with us as opposed to with like the middle schools worked with the school department before. Um, school department used to uh, at the at the seventh eighth grade level the school department used to try and program that. Uh, and you Amherst Amherst Lacrosse I think that was a, a scheduling. A, a scheduling overload for them and so we volunteered i guess the reason why i'm going through these as spring sports and feeders is one of our one of our goals here and jose has been aboard on this is to try and look at how we do feeders and to and to allow the allow amherst recreation to take as much of this feeder uh system for the high school sports on not just to put people on this on on the fields to uh uh, to, to sort of have teams, but also to try and get them into the funnel for the high schools, uh, you know, you know, healthy, uh, 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 the competition, healthy in body and mind, uh, trying to get them working with each other, trying to get them thinking about the merger of athletics and student athletics. We aren't there yet, but shoring up a feeder program is going to be a major part of our second our second year's goals um and right now we're trying to take as many of those opportunities as we can we're trying to take as many of these without overextending ourselves and overburdening ourselves we want to try and get as much of that sense of 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 we can help you we can schedule you we can put you into the spaces here uh, uh, 
And then if it works, then we can start to move them in a direction that is unified for the town of Amherst. Sarah. That's great. Um, I'm wondering about, I, for, I forget, the so girls that the UMass players are coaching, will that so, program end early because the UMass students will just no, vanish in May? In May, in, that, in what, May it usually- Or do you, you start know, coaching again? The bigger, the bigger issue, yeah. I, I might be uh, going in. I'm a I'm a safety on Friday in case they can't be there to make up for the fact that they didn't they couldn't make it today. Uh, so I am a safety and and all those opportunities to go out there and work with them. Um, uh, the issue isn't as much the end of the season and when UMass goes away. The issue is more in May when because they actually are around a little bit after the after I think they're done with school I believe, uh, but they have NCAA tournament to get ready for oh. and so. Uh, in May, they're preparing for, and I think they they're pretty good. They have their own schedule. They have their schedule. own schedule. Yeah. They're, uh -huh. they're able to do their practice and then come over and, and coach. Like the couple of women that are, are working with us, they are balancing a bunch of, a bunch of opportunities here. Um, I think we're really lucky, despite the fact that they can't be there for a full schedule. It's not a, it's not a huge schedule we have there. There are some days where they, where they, have told us it'll be hard for us. And then in May, we got to figure out what our schedule allows us to do. And so we're giving them that opportunity. We had a good friend of mine is the head coach at Northfield Mount Hermon. And mm -hmm. she came over to watch and help. And I'm trying to get her connected with UMass because that's a pipeline for her. And so there's some ways that we're trying to get other people to come in and help us also and potentially volunteer. One of the big things that we think is going to help us in the, in our goal of getting girls into sports is having women, com yeah. women athletes and competitors and coaches, coaches that are there to model and guide and give them a good experience. Yeah, the girls must love that. Just, yeah, uh, they were. I mean, they're <laughs> they're heroes. They're they don't know they're heroes yet. Like they don't they don't have posters of them on the wall. But these are <laughs> these are UMass competitive athletes, and they had a chance to go and watch them. One of them scored like four goals in the game that they went to watch, and so it was a it, it really was a cool experience for them that I can't give them that piece of it. I can coach them, but I can't give them that experience. So I grace, <laughs> graciously step aside. <laughs> um, um, and so in our long-term vision, we have, a, we have uh, some, uh, uh, some ability to create a feeder machine here for Amher the town of Amherst that does more than sports and also starts to do things to, to engage that, that, that funnel, the, the, the mental and physical health, the uh, competitive cooperation, you're competing with people you're gonna be competing against, the student athlete piece, we wanna try and turn that into something that, that makes sense. Yusuf. Yeah, I think part of the strategic plan, we were thinking we would at least start by, you know, helping with the scheduling for all these organizations. And to become, you know, and it would be a benefit to the parents that don't have to go to 14 different places to register their three kids to different sports. So it looks like you're there and even further ahead of that. So in, in a way, that's good. I know it's probably overwhelming, but I think it's a process. We just met this week with with the town, a bunch of different parts of the town. And we're going to follow up on that in the next couple of days. But talking about trying to streamline the scheduling even more. But the more we have, the more it's us talking about scheduling and taking on the scheduling as opposed to parents going to us and coaches coming to us and then going to facilities and then facilities saying I don't know who's who has priority over these fields we're trying to we're trying to streamline it to make it a little bit easier for users coaches departments to understand where the where that flow is Matt yeah I imagine having it a little bit more centralized is going to help with kids who do multiple sports or, you know, they try one sport, they don't like it. It's easier for them to try another sport and things like that. It is down the line, but, uh, but the potential for a turf also makes it, makes scheduling a little bit easier because then you have turf field and you have the, their priorities. And then you also have town fields and you have the, the, the other fields that, that basically we can, can set up basically tiers 
there. The turf field, a multi having a multi-purpose field would be really useful for scheduling purposes. Uh, other than creating a demand, the uh, that which I'm sure probably would make it a little bit more hectic. But as long as you have, yeah, I wasn't order. I wasn't talking about that. I was just talking yeah. about from the what kind of what Yusuf said um, that. Uh, for the for the families in Amherst and the kids in Amherst, um, having it more centralised makes it easier for them to transition from one sport to another sport or try multiple sports or and also find out what sports are available. Because right now, I'm sure a lot of families don't even realise that there is such a thing as Amherst lacrosse. We went out. We were being the bushes hard for it. I, we were trying to get anybody to... This is our first time through it and... We, we were really trying to get as many people into it, but it was a new thing. And a lot of kids were like, look, it's not basketball. We were trying to focus on basketball or it's not, it's not the stuff that we want to do. Um, just point us to the gym, point us to the things that we do. And so a little bit of this promotion also. Sarah? Well, I'm just thinking that um, if you could get a whole a bunch of UMass athletes from different sports, to come and I don't know, do some demonstrations or talk, or, you know, and show the kids what what the options yes. are and what you know. Yes, give them absolutely. An idea. Um, I mean, that we're we would like to make this. It's not that dad coaches aren't useful and make, we would like it not to be us always running programs and saying all right we have the kids that are ready to go which one of you parents wants to wants to step up and coach uh we want to get away from that model of of programming say listen somebody's got a coach or we don't have a season we want to try and have some level of obviously expertise of of Commitment number one, expertise number two, and maybe even you talk about uh, UMass or something like that. Somebody who is actively involved and can and can be a sense of of sort of uh, uh, you know, swagger, uh, inspiration, the sort of person that that yeah, makes people role, role model. the role modeling sort of sort of thing. Uh, that you can say, look at that person, say that person is a Hall of Famer, that person is a competing athlete, that person has been, has been playing professionally, or that person made varsity and is giving back, uh, somebody who, who can engage with them in ways that I think a feeder program is really successful in doing. We want order, we want structure, and we want some sense of, of I want to step in that person's shoes. With that UMass situation we have right now, I think that's a really strong, uh, I think it's a really strong model for them. A bunch of girls, girls sometimes they come in 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 pockets here where we like it was pretty good numbers for that group. I think there are about 15 girls on the team. Uh, for the first time running, that's not something you usually see. And sometimes with girls, especially at that age, what we find is that they it's it's a social, the friends say, hey, let's do lacrosse. And so that's the best way to try and keep kids in lacrosse, to try and keep that lacrosse program moving. The high school starts to see that we can start to do high school, you know, ask the high schools to spend one practice day and come down and work like a clinic with, uh, with the youth. Uh, take an hour out of your practice time to come over and work with the kids. Uh, you know, that's, that becomes a way of trying to get kids to see, uh, you know, to, to look at 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 you know what where there's investment in us more than just do you like this do you not like this i think i mentioned to this group before that i want to get away from the model of we're teaching kids how to be consumers and and uh and the way we program we're teaching kids how to we basically put programs out there and they say yeah i like that i don't like that uh, you know i'm going to try something different we teach them how to sample and move on we don't teach people how to invest or to create or guide those and that's that's philosophically where I want the feeder programs to move into. Not that we own the kids, not that we want them not to ever leave. You sign in, we want you to be lacrosse for life, but we don't want it to just be constantly sampling in and saying, eh, you know, I, I don't like this. Well, what can we do to make it more enjoyable? Or, or do we just have to, is, do, are we asking our coaches and our, and our programs to serve you? Eh, you're not a star yet. Okay. Well, maybe you can try something else next year. We want to try and, try and 
coach some of that commitment into them. Questions on sports and the feeders. Okay, um, for these, uh, uh, we don't have, uh, Nikki and Noah were unable to come. We had our first major July 4th meeting, Family Fund 4th uh, meeting at UMass today. Uh, 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 this, uh, these are upcoming projects that I wanted to just let you all know what was going on because it's a little bit off the beaten path. I won't cover the youth center right now. We, we aren't, I don't think I have a major update here for us there. Middle school transition, I don't need to cover because there's, that's still in the process here. We had a meeting today about, about some of the planning that's going into about the physical plan and that sort of thing. And I don't have new information on the middle school transition, but both of those obviously long-term are, are uh, heavy factors in what we do. Um, I can look at though at the first three and just briefly mentioned the Crest partnership for, uh, you know, Crest is here, they're active and, and rolling, uh, community response. Uh, uh, you know, their director and I have sat down and talked a couple of times. Uh, they are working directly with our outreach group, which I think is a great partnership for us to try and try. Uh, we're trying to help them normalize in the community to help them not have to come out there and like beg people for their attention and whatever. We're trying to, uh, we have some of those sorts of community events that people are coming in and checking in and, and like rooting for people. They want to be a part of that part of the community so they can show up and, and, and watch kids, root kids on and to interact with kids where they're doing things they want to do. Um, uh, down the line, Cress will be involved in some things where it's less sort of fun, but but one of the major things in making that work for the town, for us, for the people in the town, one of the major things to make that work is to help to familiarize it, to help normalize it and make it so that so that people respond to them as people who are involved in the community and will be there, you know, you know, to to make it something that where they get a chance to steer their own their own uh, relationship with the town. By coming to our events, outreach events, sporting events, uh, uh, by seeing them interact with our, our professionals, our staff, our coaches, um, I think we go a long way towards legitimizing them in the eyes of people without them even knowing that that's what's going on. Sarah? I know the director is been hired are, are you saying that there are already some they're in the, proce they're in the process of making some hires still they're they're filling their ranks but Cress is up, like they're they're already moving budget they're already uh they're already talking about programming i, I don't I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're not complete they aren't they oh, aren't yeah. all okay. in stride right now but they okay. are actively uh coming up with scheduling they are they are working budget they're they're looking for budget mm -hmm. they are you know they're 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 moving money right now that, and that's fine i was off. wondering though about like so if there are responders who can come to events like do they have a uniform are they going to no, wear like no. a, pin, a penny that says crest so people nope. Can connect, you know, and I think, recognize. I think there's going to be some ways to identify, but there is no uniform. There is no. I think that's out of design. They have no right. interest in doing uniform. But by something that indicates their. You're going to do role. some. Yeah. Our plan is also to to uh, have them, uh, basically, to introduce them. Hey, Crest Crest director, uh, uh, you know, have them come. We talked about doing like half court shots at basketball games if we were in basketball season right now about just having them come out and basically basically uh you know staff an event put on an event that that uh on the sidelines or to do a meet and greet with parents on the sidelines or whatever just to just to again say we're here this is this is what we're doing yeah i would just say that to to kids adults all look alike yes so that i think it would be really useful for them to have something you know to be wearing something not a uniform because that's that's the wrong direction <laughs> um but just something that distinguishes them so right. just 
they won't they won't recognize they, they won't look hey yeah, that's no, no, no. We're just <laughs> that's a different adult <laughs> um, just some total random adult yeah so we are we are working with Crest to try and to try and uh, help them in their uh, first steps to try and aid in whichever ways we can because of our role in the community we're a really convenient spot for them because of what outreach because of where outreach is particularly uh, uh, facing uh, the events that they're that they're looking at it's also another major uh, partnership for them and like I said Nikki and Earl have already started to, to uh, you know, uh, share some planning. Matt. Yeah, just so I understand. So you're talking about them participating in like the 4th of July type of events. It will be there like at 4th of July. Of and, like, and not outreach. just standing on the side, but actually, you know, running yes. a booth or something like that. Yes. Um, um, and then also within the, the existing programs like in the after school programs and in the some of the sports programs having them show up for like some kind of sessions and things i i should say i i think it speaks to sarah's point about about making sure that they have a presence that's not just sort of being there it's something elevated above just being there i think the the goal is to give them branding space at our events to give them a, a chance to brand if it's tabling if it's if it is a, a you know sort of wearing t-shirts that say crass or or uh, performing a skit at halftime what uh, whatever it is we want to give them a chance to brand in ways that make sense for them at our events that means outreach events that means that means the uh, sporting events. That probably means after school. We haven't talked specifically about that, but to have them sort of go and introduce themselves and 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 work their way into the communities that we're that we're serving. When street hockey, uh, we will be we'll be making a, a big push here the next couple of days, but we have a. We have a one day free clinic that the Boston Bruins are putting on on Thursday of vacation week uh, at Mill River on the basketball courts. Um, uh, they are going to they they're going to donate a full set of street hockey equipment for us for uh, after after it's over. We're going to use it for the for the clinic and then they're going to leave the equipment with us. So if we ever want to use this, I might even talk to the school department about about you know, loaning it to them if they want to, they want to try and use it in curriculum. But, uh, uh, you know, Bruins are going to be doing some branding there also. They're going to, you know, I, I said, if that, I'm not a huge hockey guy, but I love Patrice Bergeron. I'm like, if, if Bergeron comes out here, then I'll just shave my face and I'll pretend like I'm a kid and sit there in the front row. Uh, they're in the middle of a Stanley Cup push. So, <laughs> so the players won't be here. But next Thursday, we have... The, the Bruins team, the, the Bruins team is sending a group out here to run an hour long clinic, which we teased out on social media earlier in the week. And we just gave specific information, register, uh, register for the free clinic so we can get a sense for numbers. And next, next Thursday, we're going to have people, uh, uh, we will have people uh, out there sort of, sort of on their, on their vacation week. Uh, uh, getting a little bit of attention. And so that's pretty exciting for me. Um, I, I have think an idea. Have, Yusuf. So once we have the equipment, we can do Crest versus fire department, Crest versus, <laughs> you know, you can that's, tell. That's awesome. <laughs> that, that, that's a, and, and take a look and see how many people are really, really good at this. Yeah, we, that's, a, that's a great idea. Well, it's better if they're not good because it'll be more fun. Yes. <laughs> you know, but it'll be one way to kind of introduce that, you know, like, oh, what is this Crest thing? You know what I mean? Like, just a thought. I think Nikki could have fun with that. Well, I will bring that to Earl's attention. I'll bring it to Crest's attention and say, hey, we got street hockey coming up here. You can either be there or hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, could, we could have you sort of watch so you learn, get some pointers for when we put you in gear and say... <laughs> <laughs> game to 15 <laughs> <laughs> so that's exciting um 
uh, this is since I made this, this is another piece that goes in here and Matt Kane, I hope you get I hope you get excited about this one. I, we just also posted on on social media. I went to the musical on Friday. I, I'm a huge fan of the musical. I, like I'm a huge fan of, of like that's I, I it's like I know when they run a musical over in Amherst, I'm going to be there every night. I almost went there on Saturday, but I heard that would have been a <laughs> that would have been a mistake. Um, I went on Friday. I went on Friday and it it blew my mind away. I was, this is a really good performance. I don't know all these kids, which makes it a different experience for me. Uh, but I said, you know what? It, it, I hate the fact that I don't know all these kids. And so I came back on Monday and I had Nikki's my social media master. I had I we posted a basically a an invitation for all cast and crew of of the of the uh, uh, of the musical to come by. Basically, come, uh, the director Harp came and saw. He's, he he loved it. It was a great performance. Come by recreation on Thursday or Friday, three thirty to five. I blocked off time that I know I'll be here, and said, "Come by, uh, chat with us, sign my program. We'll give you five dollars off of any any uh, summer program, uh, any summer programming. We will do uh, a, a free swim pass for like a, like a guest pass for a swimming pool. If you choose that instead, we're, 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 I would like to try and get them to come. Even if they don't come, I want them to hear <laughs> that, that, Hey, you know, great job. Recreation says you know, we put up a little, a little, uh, uh, sort of, sort of a hair themed, uh, uh, you know, congratulations to the, to the, to the musical. Um, and so maybe five people come by, maybe 27 people come by, maybe everybody says, Hey, I, I heard all about that Ray Hart guy. I want to go over and sign his program. I don't know how many people show up. It may be a fizzle. It may be a great sort of thing, but it does start. I'm, I'm excited because it, it's a chance to, for me to get some FaceTime with kids, which I haven't had a lot of. So I came on, uh, especially with the high school age kids. Um, it was a great show. Uh, I, I hope to get an opportunity to tell some of them that, uh, 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 and, and, you know, maybe I even try and send word through people, uh, you know, just check that, uh, you know, head on over there. They're, they're offering, even if they don't want to take the, uh, even if they don't have interest in the rec programming or the little, in, the little small incentives we're giving, uh, you know, I would love to get that opportunity. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, they're most likely going to do another performance uh, after oh, the break. Great. Great. The 29th. Uh, the 29th. 29th. Then I maybe maybe I do a follow-up. Uh, uh, Ruby, did you hear about my uh, my pitch? She can't hear. Okay. <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll ask her okay. later. If she, what? If it's a... Did you hear that the, the rec program director invited people to come and sign his program you didn't hear that no no okay. no she didn't hear that okay well then maybe i follow up and say i'll be there and, okay. and i'll come by backstage and I, may, I may just go back and try and get people to sign at that point or something yeah uh, that's awesome yeah. oh no they got to do that to rehearse again for more <laughs> you have to spend more time in I, don't, rehearsal? I don't know i don't think so i don't <laughs> okay. think so so it might be a little sloppy, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah, we haven't heard anything about rehearsing anymore. I will yeah, be. Yeah, you got, you got, they got three parents here on the committee with people in it. Oh, really? <laughs> Yusuf, where, uh, give me your uh, connection. So uh, my son is Christian. He's the one, he was in the quartet. Okay, excellent. One looks like Shaggy with the, with the funky jacket. <laughs> uh, okay okay the one that looks shaggy that's a that, that narrows it down for me no it looks like shaggy from oh from... it looks like Sha got it yeah. <laughs> got it my daughter was going to go see it on saturday so she's a disappointed audience I, member <laughs> i was i was tired and so i almost just said uh, i don't need to watch it tonight i'll go with it tomorrow night and i would have been really upset with myself if i did i was going to go twice yeah. Excellent. Uh, so what are the chances? I know obviously we, we canceled the theater this year, right? 
Mm -hmm. Is that something that's slated for next year? Like the I also theater? on Saturday I went over and watched Missoula's Children's Theater. Uh, the Missoula they the Missoula Children's Theater comes around. Missoula, Montana has a traveling tour that comes in, and and basically one week they were out here working with with uh, middle school age kids, middle school elementary school age kids, and teaching them Rumpelstiltskin. Uh, they had them. They had them uh, for one week. It was really amazing that they had everything down. It, it was well oiled machine for a week. I thought that was amazing. Um, uh, it was fun. It was about a, a little more than an hour, and and the kids looked like they were having a great time. Uh, it was a nice size. I, there were two shows on Saturday. I went to see one of those. That was run in cooperation with obviously Amherst uh, Community Theater. Um, they also have uh, Broadway Melodies coming up, which is their own show. It's a smaller show here than their their big time musical. We are planning on bringing them back next year. They're they're geared up and ready to, you know, you know not the wood to uh, to have the opportunity to do a full uh, musical performance next year, and I can't wait. Yeah, I, I think it's. The only thing that's good about them not doing it is that I don't have the commotion here about ticket sales. Uh, that I'm going, I'm spending my first year here without dealing with that and and everything else we're doing. So that's the one thing that is convenient about them not being there. But I I would rather have them obviously doing a musical. I, I love the performance. I love uh, I love seeing it. So. Um, I look forward to obviously seeing the, I, I probably will go by, uh, uh, if I'm free, I probably will go by and see the musical again. And now I'm a big fan of the, the little kids uh, theater stuff. So I'm gonna be looking for, for uh, any information the elementary schools can give me on those. July 4th, the information I can give you on July 4th is that it is July 1st this year. Um, we just made that official earlier this week and in the meeting today, it was, uh, it, we had partners with UMass and uh, uh, first responders and uh, uh, you know, everybody that's gonna be involved in this, all, all the stakeholders in this, in this process were sitting down to go over how this is gonna run this year. Um, it's July 1st because right now the, the, a lot of the, the, the uh, companies that set off the, the fireworks are limited in their, in their shooters. Um, Northampton's running their, their fourth celebration on the 25th, I believe. Uh, same reason, because there is an availability closer to the 4th. Uh, we, had, we had the choice of going July 1st, which is a Friday or July 8th, which is a Friday. Um, those dates given to us, and we certainly decided that July 1st was gonna be much more appropriate. Um, the tough thing is that it is a Friday and it's not a holiday. And so there's some issue about, well, there's gonna be people coming in. It's a, it's a, it's a work day. It's a, it's a, you know, it may be a different sort of a feel to it if it's not a, if it's not a full holiday. Uh, our access to have uh, uh, summer camp workers come over there and and staff it certainly are, is limited, but not but not removed. Um, we have some things that are adjusted. I don't think we have the full because we can't guarantee that that uh, summer camp staff. I think we are you know, modifying heavily what we did with kids carnival there. Um, believe we're still doing a tethered hot air balloon. Um, but that was also something that we were talking about whether or not that makes sense to keep on. Um, the, 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 the activities there are, you know, I think we still expect to see a large number of people. We have vendors that'll be there for the uh, sort of fair thing. They, the, the vendors have their own sort of, sort of vendor carnival uh, opportunities there. We have music. We have we have. Uh, it'll be July fourth. Uh, 
maybe downgrade a little bit, but especially after Winterfest, it, it was our goal to make sure that we didn't that we didn't lose the opportunity to to uh, you know uh, sort of put ourselves out there and to put on a good show. Um, July first, our rain date would be the eighth. Um, it would take rain to for us to move it. Sarah. Did you say, maybe I didn't hear, did you say the hours that will be after school or? It is after school. I believe okay. we start around five. We'll be setting up all day, but uh, I believe the, the event starts 4.30 or five or so. Um, so so up until, I think the, the fireworks start at nine, the beer garden closes at like right before the fireworks starts. I think the beer garden closes at 8.30 and fireworks close at nine, and fireworks start at nine. Uh, uh, a lot of the, the, the music plays right, they have the, the entertainment that goes right up until the fireworks. Matt? Sounds like a good way to kick off the holiday weekend. At, we're, we're gonna try and, uh, I, was, I was telling them that I, that I don't like the idea of doing a July 1st, but if we do it July 1st, we will sell the heck out of it. I, I said even more, I don't like the idea you of can, doing you it. Can go, you can go to multiple celebrations now. You're not, you're not stuck I at think, only going to one. Unfortunately, I think Greenfield is the same night. Uh, okay. I think Greenfield celebration is the same night. And uh, a couple people told me, yeah, I think Greenfield does a pretty nice job with it all. So I said, okay, well, we just got an ante. We have an ante up here. I don't think we lose too many people that say I'd rather just I'd rather drive way up the road there. But uh, but but I think we are the same night as Greenfields. If we had to do it the week after, it's even less desirable uh, to do it after July Fourth ends. And then it's like I don't want to do fireworks now. Who who <laughs> who wants that? But we could certainly sell that if we needed to. I think July first is the right day for a lot of reasons. And also has just come up in the last week, I can, I can mention here as essentially new business. Uh, and I will find, oh, attendees. Oh, that's Carolyn. Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I got excited. There's, a, there's one attendee in there. Um, uh, uh, we have, we're working right now in the early stages of trying to bring in a fitness court, a sport court to Amherst. I'm trying to work it out. I'll, I'll share with you all the link. I'm making a note for myself right now. I will share with you a link so you can look at like the, the advertisement and, the, and, the, and sort of a glimpse of what it is. You might have seen them before. I think it's one of those things that might end up being a wave of the future in terms of public records. It's an outdoor uh, station. It's, it's sort of a compact seven stations on a, about a half of a tennis court size size uh, facility um, that, that uh, you know, gives a lot of public access to health and fitness. Our ideal, it's, it's important for me to say that that's not necessarily, we aren't committed to this being the site, is to put it over at war, would be to try and look at the, the possibility of putting it at war and connecting it with, with uh, number one, the future plans for, for renovating the war memorial pools and the, and the pool house over there and whatever we need to do, uh, Wesson and Sampson, whatever we need to do with that space over there with, with the decrepit basketball court and the sort of, sort of beneath the softball hill, the, the space that we just, uh, you know, nobody should use right now. There, th we do need to start planning on that. And, and this is a way for us to make sure that we have uh, that, that we're steering some of that conversation. And if I can tie it into the renovation with the pool house, my ideal is to have it over there. We are looking at other options also. It also potentially, it's not the same project, but, but because of the access to it, it also sort of speaks in concert with the track project and wherever that is, because it's right across the road. And that Crossing that road is a significant cross because you're no longer in war property. You're now on regional school property, and that's that 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 makes it so there are different projects with different pools of investment and what have you. It's relatively it's it's relatively inexpensive. The sport court is, 
And so if we can find the funding and cannot block other plans over there, then we're, we're trying to find a way to make that work. I, I figured I'd introduce it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll link you all to the to some of the information that we have here so you can look through it at your own leisure and, and share any feedback you have about it. Sarah. Yeah, you won't forget about pickleball, right? And it's pickle, yes, pickleball. Hard, pickleball is very much talked of, like maybe that would be a location. So um that was that is also another one of those one of those uh, conversations here. I spoke to Paul a little bit about it. I spoke to Sean about it, uh, Mangano a little bit about it in finance. Uh, that is, and and Dave, uh, uh, Dave Zomek and I have to sit down and, and sort of figure out what the next steps is to find that space. War is one of the places that we looked at as being a potential site for it. And I don't think they're they're exclusive to each other. I think the space is the space could be. Uh, uh, could be co-used. Uh, 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 actually, uh, we mapped out. Uh, there's still plenty of space in the. Oh no, I, I forgot the dimensions of the pickleball court. I I did meant I did ask when we sized out on Google Maps. We sized out how much space we would need for the for the sport court. There's still a sizable piece in the back, and I said, well, that would be. Uh, you know, we need to take a look at that. That might be enough space for us to put another project like pickleball back there. Remember um, they want two court or the project is for at least two courts. I suppose they could be at different locations, but it's probably more expensive to do it that way. Okay, no, we wouldn't want it at two different locations. Um, yeah, we, we definitely would, that would be counterproductive to do it two two locations. I but, thought uh, the pickleball was going to be in uh, uh, in North Amherst at Mill River. That is still our hope. That still that still is some of our hope. I think the the when it got pushed through, it was pushed through under the understanding that that uh, it was presented as an option for Mill River, but it but but it would be accepted without the, the caveat that we don't wed ourselves to making it Mill River, that we, that the next stage is for us to, as a town, go in and decide what, what's the best place for it. We okayed pickleball, but now the town is, it may be that, that Mill River is the right place for it. And we will investigate that and look at the, look at the, 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 the finances and look at the ac access and looking at all those pieces that made that, that committee that made, made that, uh, uh, a petitioning group uh, that that made them energized about that space, but if it doesn't make sense, then we have been tasked with the with the with the responsibility of finding where it does make sense. Carolyn, what's the, what's the timeline for that, right? For the pickleball, yeah. For for making a decision on pickleball, um, I haven't had a deadline. Um, um, you know, I my goal, and I I talked to Dave about it. My goal is to make sure that it doesn't get lost in the right. Oh, thumbs up! Now let's just wait for somebody to do something about it. That's I think that's happened with other projects that we that we've seen in the town. That's me as a new guy. I don't please. I know this is recorded. Please don't take that as 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 uh, as a uh, matter of fact. But I think that, that mm -hmm. sometimes happens. Sarah, I would yeah. Uh, no money can be spent um, before July 1st. July 1st. But, if, but if staff doesn't charge time against, you know, looking, yeah. poking around and thinking about what sites are, are best suited, that's, that's fine. Yeah, so I, I hope the War Memorial Pool Repair will happen this year at the end of, at yes, that's, the, end of the season. That, that is a hope there also for ARPA funding. No, no, it's already got a CPAC print. From sorry, CPAC. Uh, sorry, C oh, oh, I see the the pool, the I the, you, the repair, yes. the cracks, yes. the uh, That that's been a, I, I didn't mean to to segue directly into that when I said projects that have been paid for that have been that have been accepted and haven't really happened yet, but that was what I was thinking of when I when I mentioned that. Um. And so again, I don't need the middle school transition. I don't have new information for you in middle school transition. They're still working out uh, 
here, there. They're still working out the Fort River uh, versus Wildwood question. Youth Center, we're, we're in the middle of that, that needs assessment uh, and no new information there to talk to you. I have been talking to the Family Center about some of the opportunities that they provide. I will put you know, everything that I, when we, when we put together a needs assessment, we start, to, we start to assemble that data. I'll make sure that I get it to you all in that process also. Yeah, and I think since our last meeting, the uh, school committee approved the, uh, in principle, the, the track re realignment and the um, turf field. Wait, since we started meeting tonight? No, no. Oh, what, since we met last, okay. Well, what they approved... Is that... Hmm? What they approved was they approved... Here, Ruby, so thank you. They approved $1.5 million to go towards that, and you have a year to fundraise to get it all, and then they'll okay. re-vote in okay. January. I see. So you got to raise $2.5 million, and they're trying to get that from ARPA and some other... Correct. Oh. Community. All right. So they're uh, hoping to please. move forward with that. Please let her know, since she's standing right there, please let her know that uh, I've heard good things about her and I'm a big fan <laughs> at some point. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I did know, I, uh, I should have included this with the feeder conversation. I'm also talking with Victoria Stewart and Mike Morris about, about doing some field research to try and find towns that merge recreation and and high school athletics in a way that's productive that this feeds my feeder vision uh, we're looking at trying to find ways to make our program work uh, work cohesively so that we can do what I think is is a mission for us and we can be basically we can serve that that next level and work with the school department um, In that process, we we looked at some of that. Uh, in the process of trying to figure out what we're doing, we did look at at um, things like this. Any new business? Okay, I've got nobody in the in the waiting room other than Carolyn. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, if there are no other information, we should probably pick our next meeting date. Um, are, should we go back to the first Monday, or do you want to take another Monday after the first Monday because it'll be right on top of where we are right now? I guess it depends on how much is going on. Do you feel like you have enough to fill another meeting in two or three weeks, or? In the next couple of weeks, uh, I mean, what, what do I anticipate seeing in three weeks? We will have, I might have more information. I think we're trying to move pretty quickly in the direction of that sport court. So I might have more information with you. We can have a conversation about that then. Uh, uh, be in the middle of the July 4th planning. Uh, summer, I think we'll have summer, or I, think, I think we'll be posting uh, uh, some of our summer programs have already been posted. Uh, you know, there are people signing up and registering for summer programs. I think we might have a conversation about summer programs in our next uh, commission meeting. Uh, I don't know if there's any other big stuff coming up between now and then. Uh, so I think it would make sense for us to go, for us to wait another week, and then maybe push back to the first week again after that. Sarah? Might you have, might there be news or an update about a um, youth center at, at the next meeting? Or, I mean, I don't know. Might, there, there could be, the, our goal is to have, we were gonna try and do, do our, our data collection, our surveys, and we're trying to do a series of basically uh, uh, like, like forum discussions and bringing people in, uh, Select, select folks in, parents, kids to come in like on a Saturday or whatever and, and feed them pizza and have a conversation about, about recreation here. So we, I think 
three weeks would give us time to sort of start those also. Uh, well, not, not we, won't, we won't have, we won't have anything. We won't have anything formalized at that time, but I might have more information about where we are with it. I keep on putting youth, youth center on the agenda, thinking that there's gonna be something specific about that, that we just haven't, I don't have anything new or pizzazzy for you. I'd have an opportunity to, to bring in some members. I have an opportunity to, to uh, recruit some, uh, a couple people to, to fill a couple places on the commission. Hmm. What's a good day in May? Yeah. Okay, let's get at the calendar right now. Um, the first Monday is the second. That is not a holiday. That is uh, it's free. I don't if we think wanted. I can do the second. Okay. I think, again, I think ninth would be, oh. Might be out of oh, town on the night. I can't. I can't go on the second. So, uh, so nor can so that. I think I'm at the same the same event as Sarah. Yeah, probably. I might. There's a chance I'm out of town on the ninth. I, oh, I might be going to surprise my mother with a visit for Mother's Day. Well, if she watches these recordings, it's not a surprise. <laughs> it'll be it'll be the next best thing. Blow it. <laughs> um, well, we could, this is a Wednesday. Um, about I think, San, I think San, it's impossible for Sanjay to oh. meet on Wednesdays. I think, I think Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are really difficult for Sanjay. Uh. We could just, I mean, we can make a move to try and move them to the end of the month now. And until we, we need to move it, if we want to go to the 23rd of May, that is a little bit of distance between now and then. And I can just send you all briefings if there's information that comes up. I'll be away, but I can do it the week before. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I didn't mean the 23rd. I meant the 16th. Oh yeah. I can't make that. 16th. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? I could actually do. I might actually be back here on the 9th. Let's plan on the 9th. That would give me a chance. I could sneak to my mother's basement and just hide from her <laughs> I, that's that's a complete joke i'm joking i would never i i need to spend as much time as i can i think that's my travel back day because i need to be here for something on tuesday so i might be whatever i let's plan on on tuesday the 9th if i need to postpone it we can figure out from there okay. yeah monday the 9th monday the 9th okay Awesome. So that's it. That is it. Uh, then in that case, motion to close. So Seconded. <laughs> yeah. Well, have a wonderful day. I will, uh, I'll send you the sport court information. I will send you any updates on any of the projects that we see. And maybe even I get uh, my three connected uh, 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 Amherst Theater folks, I may even put in your hands the, uh, a copy of our social media posting, just so you, if, you, if your kids have friends and want to send them over our way, we'd love to, we'd love to host. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Bye.